All right, so it is saying we're live. Let's see if it comes up on the screen here for a second. Uh, it has not. What a surprise. <laughs> All you All right. Yeah, it could be just uh, the beauty of YouTube at this point. All right, so I'm getting a, an advertisement, so that means we've been monetized, which is a good thing. Um, you know, the 35 cents I'll get. And we are, we are officially live, sir. Well All right. Done. So uh, this is Travis, as you guys can see. And thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. But tonight is going to be a, a night for Icarus Precision, uh, not for me. Uh, and the whole point of this is to actually kind of get some some knowledge mm -hmm. out there about one of the coolest things that, in my opinion, has come out in a while. You know, I had mentioned prior uh, many, many months ago, it feels like forever, that um, I always wanted a, uh, an aluminum striker fired handgun. And now we have them. Now they're actually out there. And I'm not talking about the SIG AXG, which many of you know, but as you've seen in my videos, uh, Icarus Precision has done a fantastic job in, in my opinion, evolving the gun game a little bit. So at this point, I'll have Travis talk a little bit about himself, talk a little bit about the company, and then we'll see how, how we go from there. So Travis, take, take over, buddy. Well, thanks for putting this whole thing up, man. I really appreciate taking your time to do this because this, this kind of technology platform is not my thing by any means, but uh, you offered it up. So excited to take you up on it. But I'm Travis. I'm the CEO, founder of Vickers Precision. Um, we obviously, as 1776 just said, we make the aluminum uh, grip modules for the 365 and 320. We started out in the firearms industry probably two or three years ago, and it kind of all started in the this general moving towards a SIG platform because a really close friend of mine, 26 year military special forces veteran and retired law enforcement veteran, who's was also a big, big SIG fan, came to me and said, hey, you know, I, I love SIG. They just came out with this new, you know, 365 lineup for striker fire, you know, concealed carry guns. And it was just like the hottest gun in the country right now, which I didn't know, but it, it's true apparently. It's still true from what I understand. And uh, hey, is there a way you think you can make this out of aluminum? He said, uh, yeah, probably, but I don't really know. We'll have to just try and see what we can do. And uh, it was about probably a year worth of R&D. And I think last time I counted, it kind of got depressing. There was like 26 or 27 revision models of various 365 before we really had one that we could, felt was durable enough, um, held up the testing. And we decided to go go live with it and start selling them. And uh, it was initially pretty slow getting going because we're basically a nobody in uh, the world of firearms, which is full of giant companies that make phenomenal products. And uh, so as we got more and more feedback from customers um, and more and more testing, we got involved with more and more other companies that are already in this firearms field and <clears throat> gave us feedback and uh, stuff. And kind of evolved it into the newest, latest generation of 365 hybrid line, um, standard XL, XL Pro. And concurrently, when we were starting the 365 development, we also started the 320 development because that was also the new military standard sidearm. And so we started work on that. And that took over a year, I think, too, to get that one going. And um, I think 1776 has one of the original um, X-Carry yep. modules we came out with, kind of had the golf ball sipling in it. Which yep. was, we liked it, but um, I'm the first one to admit I'm not a professional shooter, not at all. I'm just a guy that grew up in the country that liked to shoot guns and ride motorcycles. Um, but we got it out there and we kind of started making this, hey, we want to do something kind of unique on our own. So we came out with the kind of the golf ball dimpling, um, which looks just like a bunch of holes poked into a grip module. And I might lean over here a few times because I have a whole sea of grip modules, different generations to my right here. So kind of got a lot to go through, but the first one was this dimpling pattern. I think the one you have, 1776, is actually a bigger dimpling. This is a really small, finer dimpling. Yeah. We tried sizes and spacing on it. And it didn't look like it was going to be grippy at all. And surprisingly, it's grippier than you'd think it would be. But I agree. it's hard to sell something to a customer from a company that nobody knows and tell them, right. trust me, it's really grippy because it doesn't <laughs> look really grippy. Um, most of the feedback was positive. Like, yeah, it's actually grippier than we thought it was going to be. But we decided yeah, not, to cut. Kind of, go ahead. 
I would definitely agree with that. I mean, you guys made the attempt. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think when, you know, you said it best when you were kind of, well, we're nobody, we don't really, we're not expert shooters or anything. And obviously when you're a growing company, it's good to listen to people, especially who want a better experience or even a uh, something they're more used to. So the golf board, the golf ball texture, I described it almost like suction cups in the video. Mm -hmm. And it, it was, it was grippier than I thought it was going to be. But again, you know, moving and fast forwarding to that gen two grips, uh, it, it's, it has made such an impact on that module as a whole, because now the people who are complaining, well, it's just not grippy enough are going to be able to say, okay, now I have more texturing. Now it's actually giving me that more, um, solid feel in the hand, especially if my hands are moist wet, sweaty, full of blood, I don't know, milk, who knows. But mm -hmm. I think at the same time, that was such a vast improvement. So I'm glad to see that you guys were willing to at least understand, all right, so it was good, but now people are wanting this, let's see what we can do. And then you took it off, so. Right, it was, it was just like, say, trying to trying to sell something on the internet, which is a majority of our marketing is through the internet. It's like, yeah, trust me, it's grippy, even though it doesn't look like it's grippy. So we took some feedback. Again, some of our professional shooters that test this stuff out are like, yeah, I like it, but it'd be better if it had this. So we said, oh, crap, we'll go back and kind of uh, re reinvent that. So um, me and the other machinists who work on these projects, we went back and came out with the, basically the Gen 2 grip texture on 320s, which then I implemented also to 365s as well to give it more of that hybrid grip texture. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, you can say it's been a non-issue i've never had complaints about grip texture since we made that revision which has been awesome and once we kind of had the grip texture it was gonna be our own kind of grip texture figured out and then we started moving into from the x carry platform to we want to make a full size now we want to make a compact now we want to do this and we want to we have we have i think we have around six or seven models of 320 now. I could be wrong on that, so don't quote me for sure, but there's quite a few and there's several more in the background being developed, um, which are being tested right now by some pretty pretty elite shooters, So, which has been a blessing to have people reach out to us that we didn't even know about. Um, a couple of them have reached out to us and said, hey, uh, can you make this 320 work with us to help co-develop this specifically for our tactical needs? And I first, I wasn't sure if it was a real email or not, because it sounds like these guys don't just reach out to people like <laughs> us who are nobody and want them to build something for them. And so I finally um, had my LE, a law enforcement guy, uh, Dave, who I wanted him to be here and I was, because he could explain a lot of these features and benefits in much more detail than I can because they're kind of his idea, honestly, from his experience. I said, hey, Dave, email this guy back and see if this is this is real. And he emailed him and talked, oh yeah, no, he, this is this is legit, man. This is this is a real deal. These people are, are serious. These are yeah. special forces operators and they want to do something. We're like, well, okay, well, so we've been working on that yep. development project now for a while and we finally got some revisions back to them. We just sent some out for them to start testing again here quickly and I'll show you later on um, some previews of just the last beta prototype I have literally right now. But nice. I like it a lot and I'm thinking it's going to be a huge, huge hit for us too. All right. So let me, uh, I'm going to ask you some questions that are being asked in the side chat here. You know, it's always important, obviously, to get everybody involved and they probably have better questions than I do. So uh, <laughs> the first thing somebody asked you was, and this is Art. So Art's a, a fan of the channel. I don't even call him a fan. I'll call him a friend of the channel. But uh, he was asking, you know, now that you're using the aluminum, are there any other metals that you might be looking into or is aluminum going to be your thing specifically? We, uh, yeah, we, we've been had customers ask initially too, like, Hey, can you make one out of titanium, out of stainless steel? We had one guy wanting one out of Damascus steel and just all kinds of crazy yeah. stuff, which I see being done. It's the artisan craftsmanship and some of the Damascus ones are uh, above my pay grade. It's beautiful. Um, but back <laughs> to the point, um, stainless, stainless and titanium would probably be the two that I would say are a potential. Stainless has its own, stainless as a machinist is kind of difficult to work with. Titanium is as well in for different reasons, but um, the only reason we haven't really explored that currently is um, it would raise the price point of the modules dramatically. I mean, it would, it would go up so much, I would have a hard time selling them. I, could, I would sell some because there's guys out there that want a titanium billet piece and they pay almost whatever you ask for it to some degree. But if I can only sell two, then it's kind of 
kind of hard to justify the R and D right. and time to get it proven out. Um, stainless is decently a good possibility. I'm not quite sure what grade of stainless to go with yet because they all have their own inherent problems to work with. But that's also a very common material for for grip, you know, grips on uh, guns. So I could see that being a thing in the future. When that would be, I don't know. Definitely, we have to get kind of our probably nine or 10 core grip modules, 365, 320s, really proven out, dialed in, and then go back and figure out how do we implement this <clears throat> into a stainless steel uh, material. Will it happen? It's a good bet. When? I don't know. That's kind of hard to say. Just a matter of uh, like everything. How uh, right now we're yep. moving a lot of stuff. So time is pretty valuable. All right, very good. Now, uh, somebody is, and there's been a couple of mentions of this, and you and I have had this conversation as well as your fo the rest of your folks at Icarus Precision, because you know I was giving uh, Sig Sauer some crap, feeling like <laughs> they kind of, I don't know, kind of stole some things or, you know, borrowed some things. Um, so I think it's important that you clear the air for everybody in regards to the relationship you have with Sig. So uh, could you speak to that, please? Yeah, I'd be happy to, man. Um, we actually got in touch with SIG at SHOT Show 2019, I believe it was. I wasn't actually there. A couple of my guys were there, and they met up with some of the big, big yuppity ups at SIG and kind of showed them, hey, this is what we're doing. What do you think? And they they told us in a roundabout way, yeah, we're exploring some aluminum grip modules ourselves, but they were they were not going to confirm or deny it 100%, but they were being as pretty honest about it as I'd expect them to be. And then literally probably six months later, we get a phone call from the pretty much the biggest head guy in the pistol management division of SIG. Hey, we're going to put together this 320 P320 collective thing with a bunch of vendors that have innovative products to, you know, to go along with the 320. Do you guys want to come to SIG Academy and be you know, a vendor? And yeah, um, I'm interested in that. So we went back there. Um, talk to them and they actually were very the very first thing at day one they went they came gave a presentation and they were going to release the axg which is the aluminum 320 grip module and i was kind of bummed at first but the more i talked to them and about it and i actually got my hands on one i didn't get the chance to shoot one actually but i wanted to but we were vendor and there was media and vendor and they we both got kind of different programs um but they were super straight up about it. Like, yeah, we're going to release this. Um, it's probably going to be in the next three or four months. I think it was actually a little longer than that, honestly. But uh, yeah, they told us what they were doing. And I they've been over the top supportive with everything we've done. They've been super good with asking questions. Um, recently, we've been dealing with them even more than we were for a while there. And they've been able to supply us with a lot of information that's helped us really kind of streamline um, the 365 and the 320 modules. So our relationship with SIG is is unbelievably good. I cannot even thank them enough for how supportive they've been to help us out. And by no means, there's our hard feelings at all because they told us straight up, hey, we're doing this AXG grip module. Um, and I was, I was impressed. It's a nice piece. They've done a really good job with it. Some of the, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the problems that we had with the 320 platform specifically is in the polymer, in the back of it, there's nothing back here. It's all flat, but there's a blind pocket in the back there, obviously for the FCU to slide into. Right. So on yep. ours, we had to have different styles of beaver blocks to contain that because you can't machine a blind pocket like that, but in plastic, you can mold it, no problem. So when I saw an AXG, I was like, I got to see how they how they fix this because maybe there's way better machinists than we are and they figured out how to make this thing and we couldn't do it. We looked at it every single way we could. I was, I felt really good when I saw like, okay, they did the same thing we did. They just did it with plastic. They just got a plastic plug and they have it put in the back there and that contains the FCU instead of having ours beaver block it screws down. So I felt a lot better about ourselves that we actually solved the same problem they did just in a little different, different way. So Right. But no, they, SIG's been really awesome. I really can't thank them enough for, especially we were nobody. And they were like, hey, do you guys want to be a part of this? And like, yeah, yeah, we do. So it, they've they've been great to work with. I can't complain one iota about them. Very good. So, so you hear that, guys? No hard feelings between them and SIG. So I said earlier... 
This is really, uh, you know, probably going to be the biggest selling point of today. If you guys aren't aware, in about 45 minutes, um, Icarus Precision on their website is going to have for sale the P320X Compact Modules. Um, that's the one that I showed a couple of weeks ago. It's just, uh, just in my opinion, it's, it's a game changer for the handgun. You know, me personally, I'm not a huge SIG guy. I've never been. I've had a few, and then I wound up selling them because it just was, uh, it was more like a meh, you know, kind of one of those deals with a, with a type of handgun because I felt like there were other guns that I just enjoyed shooting more. Um, and I think one of the biggest one that a lot of people talk about is the height of the of the bore axis on the SIGs and that being a little bit of an issue. You know, with that added weight to the aluminum, it changes the dynamics of the handgun completely. So that's something you guys need to understand. So when that thing comes up at eight o'clock, please make sure you go to that website. Uh, again, I'm getting paid zero and I didn't I don't want to get paid for this. I just want these guys to have an opportunity to make it big on this on this thing because it is it is absolutely something that the many of you are gonna fall in love with automatically, especially if you were on the fence of a SIG because like I said, I'm not a SIG fan, uh, but these are guns that I'm going to keep for the simple fact that now I have a gun that really encompasses everything I was looking for as a shooter and as a, as a carrier of handguns too, um, because it is absolutely 100% usable. Now with saying that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, their, on their website, or I shouldn't say their website, but on YouTube, they also have a YouTube channel, so check that out as well. And I just noticed that I'm not subscribed, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm going to show you their uh, 320X compact trailer that you just put up about uh, seven hours ago. So I, we're, we worked on this for about an hour because we're both idiots technologically. So uh, I'm going to do it again. Hopefully it works. So Travis, I'm going to ask you to please tell me when it's, it's shown. And uh, there is no sound. I can't figure out how to do the sound, but uh, we can kind of talk through it. Um, and you guys can see it's only a 33 second video. So let's check it out. Let me see what I can do here. Um, all right, so I'm going to share. Let me do that. All right, so it looks like we're sharing, right? That looks good. A full screen, and uh, let's see. That's full screen, right? It looks like it. All right, let me blow that up a little bit more. All right, so uh, as you guys can see, that's the, the beauty of this thing. It's just amazing. And uh, the big stippling job on this, or I shouldn't say stippling, but the metal work on here is just fantastic. Plenty of Cerakote finishes. <clears throat> you know, the, uh, the undercuts, again, huge improvement, um, even on the stock frame or any of the frames after that. So, <clears throat> so that's what we're looking at. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that, that video turned out really good, too. We were really happy with that, how that worked out. Yeah, the uh, Cerakote finishes are all of our standard colors. And like <clears throat> one of my, my Cerakote guy decided to come up with kind of his own color, which he just started doing some posts on Instagram in the last couple of days about and calls it Venom Green, which is at first I thought, ah, oh, this is that's yeah, kind of a silly color. But we got a crazy amount of people requesting this Venom Green color, which is like, hey, OK, great. <laughs> it's, it's unique. It's it's pretty cool. And that'll all right, be so let's see. Some... Go, go ahead. I'm sorry, Travis. Go ahead. No problem. <clears throat> but yeah, like like I was saying, we got I got a whole slew of different grip modules. Um, I I found my polymer X compact grip module and a regular one of our X compact grip modules. Um, like the video shows the basic differences of them. I mean, they're pretty blatantly obvious what the differences are in them for sure. There's just we try to integrate a lot of our features we had in our pro comp full size and pro carry sizes with the trigger notches and. Um, like I was telling 1776 before we started out here, the biggest thing that I've noticed on this is the uh, kind of the neck width up here on the polymer module. <clears throat> we slimmed it way down on the top of our module to where it's kind of more like an M17 profile on the top. So if you have shorter fingers or smaller hands, your your control access is a lot, lot easier because it's slimmer around the neck of it. I think I just measured it and it was around 200,000 thinner, which makes a pretty big difference. It's almost a quarter of an inch. So... Um, and they just, <clears throat> they just shoot better. I mean, they just, it's, it's more mass obviously because it's aluminum has I, on average between a polymer frame, any size and aluminum frame comparable size, it's about double the weight. Almost every time I put them on a scale, cause we get questions all the time customers, Hey, what does it weigh versus a polymer and this? And almost every time it's just about double the weight of a polymer for the aluminum module, which obviously much better recoil mitigation. Um, muzzle rise is better. Um, muzzle flip is better. The beaver tails we try and uh, always 
improve it a little bit if we can, <clears throat> and then just different ergonomics of it. That's <clears throat> the biggest thing that we try and really improve on is getting the ergonomics to where we feel like it's an improvement over, over OEM um, and the material does what it does because it's just denser and heavier. So that's all good things, generally speaking, for shooting, um, from my understanding at least. Um, sometimes weight is a problem for people and I've had some people, hey, it's really cold up against my skin when I carry it. It, yeah, it's it's going to be colder than plastic, um, but some people it's it's worth the uh, trade off, and some people it's not. Um, yeah, but we can go over all kinds of different products that we have. A lot of them have been out a while. <clears throat> um, sure. The X Complex one we're yeah. excited about coming out, like you said, in like forty five minutes. And uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how many we can sell because we were up until a week or so ago, uh, we would probably get two to three emails a day from people being like, Hey, you're going to make an X compact. When's the X compact coming out? What's it going to look like? And yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's coming, it's coming. And finally a month or so ago, we put it up like, Hey, we were coming out with this. Here's the final design. And we were planning on launching this at shot show this year, which obviously didn't take place. So we're doing it this way instead, which is honestly just about as good. Good shot show is a major, uh, major yeah. investment you go do financially and just logistically speaking. So sure. And, and honestly, I think with the power of social media, you know, sometimes that could offset that loss that you may have occurred um, by not going to shot show. So I think that's important also. So some things people are asking on the side here, Travis, um, you know, one person talked about uh, the grip on the compact, asking if the uh, the trigger cutouts and all the undercuts like kind of chew into your meaty hands. If you have meaty hands, um, I have I have pretty uh, I don't want to say fatty hands, but I mean I have meaty hands, and I've had no problems with it. It just seems like even with my middle finger underneath the trigger guard fits perfectly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you've got a sausage for a finger, maybe not. But I think for most people with large um, mm -hmm. even slightly above average thickness in hands, you shouldn't have too much of a problem with it. At least that's what my assumption would be. I have had no problems with it at all. Um, now one question I have for you, cause this was mentioned also holsters. So obviously mm -hmm. we were talking the other night and you know, if you guys are looking for the compact or the carry any, in my opinion, any holster will work with those. Uh, I have found no problems. I have three holsters that work with all three handguns, no problems. But the big question is going to be the 365s. That's the one that I think most people are having issues with right now. So what can you tell us about that? Yeah, I've got some really good news on that front. Um, we got approached by uh, lag holsters and also triad holsters in the last couple months too. Um, got them some examples and they both busted, busted ass and got offerings up. Um, I just got word from my gal the other day that lag actually put up a uh, page dedicated to Icarus precision um, with 365 holsters and they got four or five different offerings, some with weapon lights, some sidecar setups, some single, some um, inside the way, some outside the ways and pretty much covered all of our 365s, um, which is, which is awesome. Um, and then triad also just, they kind of pushed the X compact, a little bit ahead of their 365s, but they're planning on having their 365 offerings out. I want to say within a week or so, it's going to be coming up really quick, but they, I believe currently do offer a holster specifically for the X compact, which we're just getting ready to launch. So um, yeah, they've, they've both really, <clears throat> really put in some time and get holster um, offerings for us in a big hurry, which is awesome. Um, we've always used a local guy here, a good friend of mine, Mike, uh, owns Black Label Holsters. Um, he's the guy for starter with, makes a great product, great holster. He's a one-man operation for the most part. So if he gets overloaded with stuff, it can take a little longer, but he makes a great product. And um, he, he also makes supports pretty much every frame we make. So he's also a, a great option. Um, but between uh, lag and triad offering too, that is a huge, huge help. So um, I'm happy to say that we do have a go-to holster places that can kick out a decent amount of product in a big hurry because that was a problem we have with some law enforcement agencies now testing and some actually adopting our grip modules but hey <clears throat> you guys might want to order like 50 grip mod or grip 50 holsters and they might need them like next right. week so these lag wow. can do that for us which is awesome so that we are really pumped and happy with the uh, lag and triad both being able to bust these things out in a big hurry for us it's been helpful Good. Now, have you found in regards to, you know, the amount that you're selling, um, the most popular of the lowers, is it the 365s, would you say, or is there something? It, it honestly is a week by week 
thesis. It some some days will sell seven 365s and one 320s, and some days we'll sell seven 320s and one 365. On a whole, it ends up being about 50-50, honestly, anymore. Um, initially, for a while there, it was mostly 365s, but as the 320 has gained some traction, we have more, obviously, size now to offer in three in the 320s. Um, it's picked up a lot in 320s. So those were, mm -hmm. I'd say we're about 50-50 with what we're making, which is which is great. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, because I would have thought it would have been the 365s automatically, you know, being the popularity of the handgun, and then yeah. you guys making this. And and honestly, it's funny because the the aluminum lower on that handgun, a lot of people say, well, it'll be a big difference in weight and all that other stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a different in weight, but nothing that I think would make it uncarryable, especially being such a small gun. And again, yeah. that added benefit of the weight goes such a long way because of the fact that you know, you have less muzzle flip, you, you know, it doesn't really feel like a, a tiny, tiny handgun. And um, I, again, not a huge SIG guy, didn't really like the yeah. P365 at all, threw that damn lower on there. And now I can't get rid of the damn gun because, you know, you guys are killing me. You're killing me with the, the good products here. <clears throat> That's a good thing. That's a good, it's a good problem to have. It is. Yes, yeah, it is, definitely. One of the biggest requests that my LEO guy, Dave, said, hey, guys, I want to have it. I want to make it except the Picatinny rail, because at that time, the SIG proprietary rail was not something that was a lot of offerings for in the accessory world, because you, the SIG rail was such a unique rail, only worked with that accessory. And for a long time, SIG was the only one making accessories for those, but now there's um, Olight and a lot of Crimson Tracer making, Streamline making parts for the SIG rail. So his, his two prerequisites for me making an aluminum 365 was, I want a standard pick rail, I want to extend our beaver tail. So we gave him a pick rail and lengthened the beaver tail by about 200 thousandths, <clears throat> which does make it sit way farther back in your hand. So the muzzle flip is significantly better. So any me not being a professional shooter, I can tell it between shooting a polymer 365 and ours, the, the beaver tail makes a big difference. That's one thing a lot of customers have been like, hey, this the beaver tail makes the biggest difference because man, the, the, the beaver, the muzzle flip is just way better. And the mass yeah. helps too. Obviously. <clears throat> now in regards to moving forward with some of the other things that you were going to be working on before we get to that, um, do you think at any time they'll wind up being gen three versions of what you're doing right now? Because obviously the gen one to the gen twos, a huge, huge improvements. And, and they were really good in the first generation, but the second generation I think has added even more improvement. So do you think there might be a gen three? Do you see any improvements that you're looking at now that's saying, man, I wish I would have hit that the first or second time around. Is there anything you're thinking about? Yeah. I'm a 365. Uh, on any of them, really. I mean, obviously, the compact's a little bit too early to talk about, but uh, yeah, no, we're, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I have, uh, I've done several 365 versions since then. Um, that again, they have some things that, like you say, you always have retrospect, which is like, damn, I should have done this like this last time, and now I can because I'm getting a little better at making these things, a little bit faster at designing them, and SolidWorks and blah blah blah, programming them. So yeah, we definitely have a Gen 3 going to be at some point for 365s as far as exactly what the form is going to be because I'll show you here in a few minutes some of the, one of the latest uh, prototypes I made of 365 kind of Gen 3 version, which I thought had a phenomenally good feature. I thought it was going to be a great idea and I went and shot it and went like, oh, this this thing ain't going to work, man. This is freaking killing my thumb. This is not a good idea. Okay, I, I got to go back to the drawing board on this. But um, yeah, we, we constantly are trying to do product improvement and process improvement um, all the time. We have to always be trying to make it a little better than it was last time and also make it a little faster than we did last time. And then we can then al also help if we can lower the cycle time to make one, I can pass savings on to customers too. Um, we had a major price reduction here uh, probably about a year ago now, I think. And that's because we were able to move a lot of the products we are making onto a lot higher speed the machining abilities. The process just got way faster way faster and so we were able to you know cut the prices a whole bunch because the first time around there and our, our stuff it's not super expensive but it's not super cheap and it's still right. money's money and i mean if my whole goal is for somebody to buy something get it and think yeah i i'm i can see i spent good money here and i can i feel good about this purchase um that's the whole point they people need to feel good about what they spent their money on I agree. Now, let me let me ask you this: what what is the what would you say is the average time it takes to put into one one of these modules? 
Um, what would you say is the average work time? On just the machining side of it, um, the proto, the R and D time and the prototyping. I, me and my other machinists, we laugh all the time because we just said we we quit counting honestly because it was getting depressing. How many hours? It was just insane for both both. I mean, I, we're talking multiple hundreds of hours behind a computer, then doing prototyping and testing them and having to redo this. It was, it was, it was depressing, quite frankly. Um, but actually, now that we've got it kind of dialed in. Um, I'd say the average time on like a 365, the cycle time is around two and a half ish hours, depending on the model. On average, um, on a 320, it, it varies more. It's substantially more. I would say the average time on a 320 frame is anywhere from three to four hours, depending on wow. the model. Maybe three and a half, four hours. So it's it's a decent amount of investment in cycle time. Right. And the reason why I ask that is because one of the things that a lot of people will bring up is, well, couldn't they make this cheaper or couldn't couldn't we get it at a more affordable price? But I think what a lot of people don't understand on the business side of things are, is the amount of actual hours it takes to, to be able to mill these, to be able to machine them, um, and that these are real people doing it. So it's not just a, a robot with an a, whatever they have, an apparatus doing it. It's, yeah. it's actual people. So that uh, you know has to drive up costs. And then on top of that, you know, being a newer company, because of the fact that uh, you're you're out there, you're doing the work, you have to start somewhere. So it makes sense to kind of start a little bit high. Then when you sell those products, you can bring the overall uh, production costs down and even hopefully give savings to the people who are buying them. But I think a lot of people get confused as to why that doesn't happen faster. And I mean, I think you, you've said it, you know, the fact that you're putting on average two hours, maybe a little bit more in the 365s, but then four hours of time, you know, cycling these 320s. So it, it people have to understand that it's going to cost money to do that. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's interesting that it takes that long. I, I mean, that's just, that's insane. It's insane. We're making, a, about it. we're making a decent amount of investments back into the company to get automation in place. So we have to have mm -hmm. less manpower, but it, like everything, automation costs money. I mean, the sure. return on investment is there, but it costs money, but it does allow us to run like right now, uh, we're running basically 24 seven on these things right now. We're just finally getting up to where we can do that. We made the investment in the equipment. Um, we're finally getting it. We're finally getting it fine tuned enough just because it's a major upgrade in technology to be able to use, utilize all the technology. So we're finally getting to where we can, we can reliably run them basically 24 seven, which is, which is great. And um, mm -hmm. if you get busier, all of a sudden my capacity that I thought I had, I thought I bought over amount of capacity. It's turning out that I bought about adequate amount of capacity because we're just moving so many units, which is a very good problem to have. I'm not even complaining about it, but uh, just sure. for reference, the, from we were, the way we were making them originally with the, we came out with the Pro Comp, which is, you know, the full size model had all the first initial crazy features and everything like that. And I was sitting there doing the math one day and the price I'm going to have to charge to do these things is, it's more than I would pay for the thing. Let alone <laughs> ask somebody else to pay. For it. We have got to get the time down on these things to where they're at least a price point that it's, right. it's a lot of money, but it's not an offensive amount of money. And we're sure. finally I feel like I feel like we finally have hit that that good price point to where um, we're actually I feel like we're offering a good good product of good value for the product. I really do, and hopefully uh, and we get more as we go on. And I agree with that. I mean, even on the X Compact, if you guys saw that video we popped up before, it has the MSRP price on there. What was it? Was it two forty nine? Did I read that correctly, or am I going crazy? No, two forty nine. Two forty nine. So, and now that two forty nine, <clears throat> that was in standard black, and then there's I think a twenty dollar upcharge for extra Cerakote. Yeah, I think it's twenty five just for <clears throat> other Cerakote colors because we try and we try and paint if we can if we have inventory. Try and get a bunch of black in stock because that's typically the color most people like black. Um, but then we have to do other colors because we do get requests for other colors too. And uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, I feel like we're we're finally hitting our hitting our price point. We need to hit where people feel right. comfortable. You know, it's not offensive, and that's where that's where we're going for. Just not uh, right. not, not really I feel like we're doing too much. And I'm just sitting here shaking my head, saying, "So we're talking less than less than two seventy five by a buck for an aluminum <laughs> lower." custom color you guys are crazy if you don't buy this damn thing tonight at eight o'clock i'm not look i'm not selling it for him i don't have to sell it for him it's going to sell for itself but that's crazy because you look at sigs and i'm going to bust on sig a little bit i can't help it that axt <laughs> is going for four hundred dollars and change 
And, and for what? Grip panels. Grip panels, people. That's what we're talking about. So that brings me to my next question. Then we're going to see some of the other stuff that you're working on. But uh, somebody had mentioned before about uh, grip panels. Is there anything in the future where you guys might be looking and investing some time and cutting out, you know, the or at least giving people the ability to put grip panels on there so we can get all the uh, the Sig Nancy's to buy it, you know? Actually, good thing you brought up because I, I was going to forget about that. But that that is actually something when we were back at Sig and I was talking to um, one of the up ups at Sig and said, "Hey." Uh, so you guys are gonna have grip panels on your AXG. Yep, we are. So if I was to make a grip module that utilized your same exact grip panels that you guys offer on the AXG, is that gonna you know upset the Apple cart at all? Do you care? No, I'm cool. I'll give you the I'll give you the drawings and the, and the dimensions for the grip panels. Okay, cool. So yeah, we are in the future. That's again once we get a lot of our core core line worked out and um, dialed in, we're planning on offering at some point 320s and maybe even 365s some kind of a grip panel type option um, for customers because we have there is enough meat on the sides of the grips um, <clears throat> to be able to recess the counterbore pocket in there to make use of grip panels um, uh, my ideal goal would be to, to utilize these same exact OEM um, AXG grip panels because that way it's <clears throat> not a custom grip panel. Somebody has to go and buy a custom one. Just make it use the over-the-counter one anybody can buy. Um, it's going to require us to kind of model our grip module to the same ergonomics as the AXG grip module, which good, bad, or indifferent, it's it's a SIG. It looks like a SIG, feels like a SIG, um, and we try and do something a little different than what they're doing. Um, but yeah, short short answer is yes. We plan on having a grip panel option at some point in the future. <clears throat> nice. So for those of you out there who need to have those, that's a possibility yeah. coming hopefully in the future. Um, so that's pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie because you know uh, there'd be nice to see some lock grips on some of those things because uh, we all know lock grips going to make them. So who are we kidding? <laughs> now. Um, Somebody here was saying in regards to the turnaround time. So let's say somebody orders a 320X compact tonight. How long of a time period are we talking by the time it gets to their door? Um, and it's this is going to be a little open to question, so I apologize. Um, I have, I want to say right now, a little over 100 actual units in stock right now on the shelf that we're planning on getting painted up and shipped out, um, hopefully Tuesday. That's usually our shipping day, shipping out Tuesday. So if we're so if we uh, if whoever it is gets their order in in the first lot of ones that are right now it'll be shipped out on Tuesday, um, if we for some reason end up blowing through our inventory, which maybe we will, maybe we won't, I'm not really sure. Um, if you go to the website and it says out of stock, just refresh it ten minutes later because we're going to be watching that so we can then go and make it a, a pre-order sale after that. And then it will literally be a first come first serve um, and we ship every Tuesday. So if it doesn't make it out this Tuesday, hopefully it'll be the following Tuesday. I don't foresee us selling so many that we can't fulfill whatever we sell above and beyond a hundred um, before this Tuesday over the next week. But that's the best answer I can give you. I know it's kind of open-ended and I apologize, but we, we try to sit on these things very long. We try and fill these orders as quick as we can. As long as we have them on the shelf, we try and get them out. Sweet. So, and again, you know, if, if that's not good enough, sorry guys, but again, this is taking manpower hours to do it. Um, he's got a hundred available now. So hopefully that'll give the opportunity for most of you to pick one up before everyone else does. Uh, again, IcarusPrecision.com and uh, the, the uh, what am I trying to say here? I can't even remember. The discount code is going to be XC. So for X compact XC1776 and you, you get a discount code and uh, use it because it's going to give you a little bit of savings. Um, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you firsthand knowledge, guys. If I could show you the damn gun on YouTube, I would, but I can't because I'll get banned for life, apparently. But uh, I've been playing around with this thing all night. You know, I've carried it a few times already. Uh, it's you, look, if you like handguns and you're looking for something with that nice aluminum feel to it, you can't go wrong, especially with the SIG. You know, SIG has kind of had a little bit of an issue here and there with some of their guns, but they seem to have been worked out. I think that this is just an amazing combination with the steel and the aluminum, especially for CZ fans. You'll know what I'm talking about, um, but definitely hit it up. And I think this is going to be great. Now, what it, what else do you got to show us? Because I'm excited because some of the things that you may show, I probably have never seen before. So I want to see what we're talking about here. So what do you got for us? 
Well, I wanted to go backwards for just a second. There's one more question. I know that um, I've been asked multiple times. I've been asked more recently, um, quite a few times. I think you had one of your uh, people on, I think Instagram asked you too. Are, you, are we going to offer a 45 version of a 320? Um, the short answer is, yeah, I don't see why we're not. We are, again, I was talking to my other guy today, my other machinist about this, like, Hey, the, we're getting more requests for this, um, more frequently now. And I don't see why we can't, because from my understanding, it's the same exact FCU. It's the same. It just is a different barrel, obviously different round. And the mags are slightly wider because 45 is bigger diameter. And I think we have enough material on the sidewalls of our grip modules that we could just figure out, take that little bit out there and make it usable for 45 and still be a 45 specific grip module and a nine millimeter standard specific grip module. But um, we do plan on offering a 45 grip module offering in probably one or two of our frames to start out with and they see how they sell and then kind of go from there. So that's something that we are aware of and we do want to address because I, I know it's something that we've been asked quite a bit. Absolutely. That's awesome. So and, that's uh, good for yeah, those guys who like those better calibers, you know? Yeah, I, I know. I, it seems like I, I talked to somebody at Sig when we were back there on percentage of 45 to 9 millimeter 40 or 357 Sig they were selling because those three calibers all take the same exact grip module, same mags as far as I'm well, 45 is only on oddball. And it was a huge i mean vast vast majority of them that they move are 940 357 say kind of that generalized 45 was a lot smaller um smaller calorie you know i i like 45 caliber personally quite a bit but it's just not as common but um yeah some of the i'll show you one of the three three uh 320 i guess is the one you and i have talked about briefly that we're pretty excited about three the x compact is has a ton of great features um we got requested by specific government um, department, I guess I should say, to help them develop a 320 module specifically to kind of meet the criteria that they wanted. And they wanted it to basically be like an STI 2011 um, DVC tactical is what they were kind of shooting for, which is from what I understand, kind of the gold standard for handguns shooting wise is a STI 2011 is kind of what they wanted. So I uh, I took apart my STI 2011, so it's just a frame. I'm not going to get in trouble on YouTube showing that, am I? <laughs> all right, well, we're going to find out when it goes all black, but go for it. Who cares? So regular, you know, STI 2011. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yep. Um, pretty much has, you know, finger notches. Pretty, I, from what I'm told, they call this the um, trifecta where it gets yep. thinner. Thinner at the top, narrow at the bottom. Generally speaking, pretty flat sides, full radiuses on the sides. So we had a gold standard to kind of start from, and we kind of had the challenge of, so how do we shove 320 guts into um, STI module, basically? So we went back to the drawing board, and again, a bunch of time and hours that are too numerous to count because they're depressing. And we came up with our own version of it, <clears throat> which is the same thing where it's wider at the bottom, narrower at the top, <clears throat> got the flip beaver tail, um, deeper up here. <clears throat> so lower your bore axis a little bit, big undercut here. We lengthened out the undercut up here, radius it more. So you can, you know, for the guys that are shooters, apparently pushing forward on it, it's pretty important. Mm -hmm. um, made the map well. <clears throat> so it's all beveled all the way around, integrated into it. It's not nearly as big as our pro carry and pro comp mag well, because this was, even though it works really well, it just looks a little bit bizarre, but it does function extremely well. Um, and I went to the range and was shooting, test shooting one of this. We're calling this our SOCOM grip module designed for. Um, there will be, this one's a safety module by the notches. There will be a non-safety and safety version of the same thing. Um, I went to the range and was shooting that next to one of our pro comps and pro carries. Um, and I'm I'm not an accomplished shooter by any means, but in my hands, I like our pro comp and our pro carry. It's like, it feels awesome. But as soon as I start shooting that SOCOM module, I'm like, this thing, I shoot good with this thing. I mean, I shoot better. This thing is awesome. Um, I had one of my... <laughs> 
<clears throat> is a professional shooter um, working with me, a guy that we collaborate with, um, Garrett Swindell at Cogworks. Um, Cogworks products, Cogworks training. Um, Garrett's Garrett's awesome. He does. They do Cogworks is training all around the country, tactical training and everything like that. And I had him shooting a, um, um, a pro comp and he's like, yeah, I love the pro comp. And I said, hey, try this new SOCOM module. This thing's awesome. You'll love it. It makes me shoot better. And he's shooting it and he goes, I like the pro comp better. But another guy that trains with him, who's also an ex-special forces guy, He's shooting them both, and he goes, I like the SOCOM better. It's like, I, I guess it just totally depends on the person shooting and what you like. But, I mean, I think I, I think the SOCOM is awesome. I think it's a freaking – just the I, – I, I like the feel of our pro comp in my hand, but the SOCOM shooting it, I just shoot way better with it. I don't know why. I just do. Um, and this, this is a carry length version, which as far as – I understand sim sig nomenclature and i could be wrong on this uh carry length is 3.9 inch barrel um compact is 3.6 inch barrel and then x5 and full is like a, a 4.6 or something like that barrel i always yeah. i was yeah. confused and even with customers asking me well i have a compact length slide will it work with this it's like i it depends on the nomenclature you use i mean i know what i go right. with but this is a carry length right. 3. Nine inch barrel version. We're going to also make the SOCOM in a full size frame as well because we only offer the one full size X um, or Pro Carry frame. We want to have mm -hmm. another offering in the full size frame and we're going to make the SOCOM full size as well. Um, so that one is, <clears throat> I again, I, I like it a lot. I'm not a professional shooter, but I think it shoots freaking great. And I was really pleased with our, my team of guys that <clears throat> came up with the geometry and everything and just the feel of it is awesome. Is, is yeah. it in it, that carbon copy of an STI 2011? No, but it, it's pretty damn close in a, a 320 platform. It's as close as you can get. Right. It, it's amazing. Um, you know, it, kind of, it, it just, <clears throat> go ahead. I'm sorry, Travis. No problem. That's, that's kind of our next, our next big thing we really have working in the 320 platform. Go ahead. Sweet. So, you know, looking at it and and kind of taking a look at it, somebody also asked a question about on the carry models, the X carry models, is there ever mm -hmm. going to be a future line where you have the undercuts on the trigger guard as well, you know, versus not having them? On the X carry, I don't know that we will um, because we have the pro carry, which is mm -hmm. basically a full size, but in carry length, pro, sorry, our pro carry this is has everything features wise in a carry size frame. And then, like I said, in the SOCOM will be a carry size frame, but have the finger notches and everything in it with a little, a minor mild flared magwell, I would say. Right. Um, right. The X, the actual Gen 2, if I can find one, our, our Gen 2 X carry we just came out with a few months ago, um, it was more modeled after the OEM polymer frame because that's a popular, really popular frame. And we just had to integrate, it's like you say, a higher, higher back strap notch, a higher finger notch here, and made it accept an OEM uh, Sig Magwell. And I, I've um, been talking with um, the guys at Killer Innovations too, a little bit north of us up in uh, up in Washington, and they make a flared Magwell that attaches to the 320X carry as well, and their Magwell fits as well. Um, I have armory craft magwells. I've seen them mounted on other people's frames they fit as well. Um, I don't know that we'll integrate the finger notches in the X carry frame because that frame, if you, you want to go to a carry size frame, I would steer you towards one of the SOCOMs that has all those features, a lot of the pro features, but still in a carry size frame. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, the X carry, you know, I, I'm going to hold mine up. I took the slide off of it so you guys could see it. But, you know, one of the things that I, I have to say when I started shooting with this gun the, there's, I don't even think there's recoil on this gun, and it's kind of embarrassing to say how poorly I shot because of that. Now, normally you think you'd shoot a hell of a lot better, but I'm telling you, it, I was expecting, I was anticipating that recoil to come back, and it's there's nothing there. I mean, it's just it's ridiculous. The only gun that I would ever say was very similar in feel yeah. to that was my M9A3 from Beretta. Uh, this thing just is like it's like 
shooting a, an airsoft gun because there's just absolutely no recoil, at least none that I could actually feel. And so as I'm shooting, I'm like, I'm kind of saying, where the hell's the recoil waiting for it? So it took me a few rounds to get through it to say, all right, there is no recoil. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> but again, you know, if you guys seeing this, I mean, I've got the apex trigger in there. So there's no issues with anything going in this gun. Um, you know, the trigger control module that gets dropped in here, you know, I was telling people when I was installing them in both the compact and carry, that there's not an issue with it. it there is a little mm -hmm. bit of a tight fit to it obviously because you got metal on metal so what i was doing i was just taking my nylon hammer and just like punching it in a little bit to kind of drive it in seat it properly make sure it was functional so that was really the only thing i saw but it was nothing that even remotely affects anything in the gun um the slide actuation is smooth as hell it's like ice um but it is just um and that's the x carry now the x compact mm -hmm. it's basically a compact version with all the features and then some and again no recoil uh just a poor shooting day because of it uh which i'm not gonna lie when I, when I made the video i didn't put any video up of me shooting because i just absolutely sucked for the first 25 minutes of shooting the damn guns so i said all right i'm not gonna embarrass myself and make this look like it's a piece of shit because it wasn't um i was just a shitty shooter that day so I have to say, man, I shot a couple of times and it's just, it's ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. But, um, you know, I'd be interested to see that SOCOM and see how that comes to, you know, fruition in the future, see how you're going to, you know, you know, finish it up and, and fix it. Because I, I've got to say just the ingenuity behind everything and the fact that you've got these, these trigger control units that pop in and out of products, it just makes it such a usable product. And, you know, the other day I was posting the X compact online and I had my X carry slide on there. So for those of you out there who are wondering, can you put the X carry slide on the compact? Yes, you can. So you have a longer slide with a shorter grip. If that's what you're all about, you have that opportunity to do it as well. So, I mean, it's just, it's just been phenomenal. It's been, I've got to say, it's been really cool working with you guys because this stuff is, it, it's just, is such a good product. Um, yeah, I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass, but it's that good. <laughs> and you should be very proud of yourselves because you're doing something that should have been done a long time ago by more manufacturers. And I think you got the jump on it. And uh, it, it blows the AXG out of the water, in my opinion, even though I've never owned one. But just uh, just what I've seen. And then you look at the price. Uh, you guys, you're just doing it right. And that's what I think I is going to attract a lot of people. I haven't seen myself either, but uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sure they shoot good. But I, I have not laid my hands on one. I, I need to get one just so I can kind of do some comparisons with it. But like you're saying, <clears throat> the whole 320 and 365 platform, um, SIG just blew the whole market open on the handguns because now you have handguns that are literally like ARs, you can like Lego gun, you can build them together. Like you were saying, I get questions all the time still from customers. Hey, um, will my carry slide work on my compact? Will my compact slide work on this or my full size M17 slide work on a carry? Any slide with any FCU will work. It's just, will the slide overhang the dust cover or the dust cover overhang the slide is the only variant. It'll, they'll all shoot. It's a matter of what do you want? But the nice thing is that you can mix and match them like that. Um, we have a ton of customers that buy our ProComp full size frame and use a carry slide on it and then run a PMM Parker Mountain Machine comp on it, which sits back inside the dust cover and it sticks out just like a sixteenth of an inch and it looks freaking awesome. Um, so it's just... Um, it, it, the flexibility is just absolutely crazy that the whole platform offers you is just nuts. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm surprised. The 365 platform has not been, you know, opened up as much because not as many guys go crazy, can, you know, doing mm -hmm. alpha, their compact micro carry compact gun, but the 320 platform, yeah, it's nuts. You can just mix and match to your heart's content. And the only only compatibility issues that we've ran across so far is magazines is kind of a pain because there's a decent amount of Gen 1 mags still floating around and the Gen 1 mags don't fit in anything except for uh, M17 yeah. or Gen 1 frame. And then they came out with the X series of mags, like in the X carry and the 21 round mags. And then they came out with the Legion 17 aluminum base plates, which is cool aluminum base plate, but it fits even less than the other ones. And that's always kind of a battle. So we're going to, at some point, <clears throat> just for our customers on our website, kind of have a matrix of 
which module, which grip module of ours fits with which magazine that SIG makes and try and make it a little easier for customers to tell if the grip, if the mags they have will work with the grip module they want to buy. Um, just kind of a <clears throat> side story. Uh, we had one customer who went through the web configurator on SIG and was going to spec out an AXG and the AX and the web configurator on SIG said, okay, you need this mag and this slide and this and this FCU. Then he decided to get everything off the SIG configurator and buy one of our grip modules and um, emailed me, hey man, I can't kind of put this thing all together and I can't get this in, this mag doesn't fit and this and this. And he finally got the FCU problem figured out and then it was a, the magazine was the last thing. He's like, the mag just goes in, but doesn't lock. It won't lock. I was like, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Send me some pictures. Let me help you try and diagnose this thing. And uh, send me some pictures. I was like, oh, everything looks okay. I was like, here, he goes, here's, you he sent me over the list of the configurator he built up in the, the SIG configurator. I said, whoa, well, I, I can tell you the problem is it's an easy problem, man. He goes, I, luckily, it's super simple for me to diagnose because you have a carry size frame and you have 15 round mags and the only two SIGs that take 15 round mags are I think a X compact and an RXP I think takes 15 round mag and you have a carry so you need 17 round mags and he goes oh man I built it up in the AXG configurator and it recommended 15 round mags for an AXG I was like I'm pretty sure the AXG takes 17 round mag and sure enough it did and he goes oh, okay well I'll return it and they took it back and they swapped it for 17 round mags and he was happy so there you go the so I just want to let you know right I just want to give you a big shout out, man, because uh, apparently the gun went or the module went live already. I don't know if that was planned or not, but uh, there are several people who've already ordered. So uh, that's awesome. You know, I'm telling you, these guys, when they get them, they're going to be friggin' beside themselves with with enjoy with just joy. And that's the best part of 2021. So far, we are bringing joy to you guys. And uh, and actually, I'm not bringing anything to anyone. They're bringing joy to you. I'm just standing and sitting in this chair with a beautiful, like, purpley blue background. Super happy, super excited that you guys are able to get in on this very quickly. Um, because I'm telling you, man, it's, it just blew my mind. This is the X Compact I got. This is that bronze. Just, just beautiful. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It works. It functions. It does everything you'd want it to do, man. And, and it, you guys just hit a home run. So we're about out of time. So we got about four minutes left. What is your your parting words for everybody tonight? Your words of wisdom for everyone. You know, I wanted to I want to show one more thing real quick. I'll try and make this fast. And just sure. as an FYI, I told you I'd show you what my 365 kind of Gen 3, I guess, would be features. And this is kind of what it looks like right now. I've tried mm. to kind of integrate some of the same kind of pro features with the finger notches along the front here. Um, I like narrowed, it. Narrowed the beaver tail down from being wider to a little more tapered. So it fits yeah. in, it fits down deeper in the, the web of your hand a little more than the original one did. Um, SIG's been really kind to provide us with a lot of information to make the everything about it easier to assemble, easier to function. Um, yeah, I, I can't, can't really say more than just, you know, without SIG designing these platforms, I, I couldn't make this stuff for them. Right. And I'm really thankful they've been as good as they have been to work with. And I got no qualms with them at all. And um, as we keep on growing the business, we want to keep on um, making sure our customer service is is top notch. And uh, as we get bigger, we'll try and try and manage that to where we can continue to have really good customer service, take care of customers. Cause they, we, I know it's, it's money. I mean, it's harder than money these days. And I want you to make sure you get it and you feel like you made a good purchase and you're happy with what you got and it functions up to your expectations. Awesome. And that's great. And I think that's going to be important for people to also realize is that, you know, when everybody starts to grow and their businesses get bigger, the number one thing that people will always, always come back for is customer service. You can make a great product, but you can have the worst customer service in the world. And and I've had some guns where, you know, they were good guns, but then when there was an issue, they just completely almost... Um, excommunicated you and you had no choice. <laughs> you couldn't do anything with it. Um, yeah. But I think customer service will always be huge. It'll trump the day. And if you guys can match your product with that customer service, it's a winning combination. You guys won't have any issues at all. With that said, Art Imla. So I'm going to put this up because Art's one of my favorites here. You know, he's uh, he's saying he wants to let you know that he's willing to be a hand model and he can send <laughs> you can send all of the test scripts to him and he will not charge you for his services. So Art, I'm sorry. I have much prettier hands than you. I am the hand model for this company and tough shit. That's all I'm saying. So, you know, no, but uh, 
you know, I, again, I, I appreciate, you know, you guys wanting to come on tonight and do this. Um, I appreciate the discount code for everybody, uh, at least for the first hundred. So that's great. Um, and yeah. I just appreciate having an opportunity to be able to test these things out and just giving a, a normal guy's point of view. I mean, I'm no special forces guy or anything of that yeah. matter, but um, just to have the ability to, to take these products and play with them and carry them and shoot them and just seeing how they've evolved even from the first one that you guys sent to now these. Yeah. It's just it's been such a great experience. And I'm glad that now people are going to really understand what I've been talking about. Well, yeah, like we so. really appreciate you. And uh, you, you were one of the first guys to reach out to us and say, hey, I'll, I'll check this thing out. And we say, hey, you know what? Let, let's do it. And you've been really good supportive for us. So we really appreciate it. And we're happy to happy to hook you and your your uh, your subscribers up with, with discount codes. We really appreciate the exposure. And that's big, man. That's big, big. All right. Appreciate it. And Brian is also saying that 365 module needs to be the next offering. And I may have to say, I may say I agree with him on that one because that thing looked badass. I'm not going to lie. So we'll, we'll do another one of these web chats. I'll show you what the one feature was on that module that didn't work out quite the way I thought it would, but uh, yeah, that's a whole other topic for another time. All right. Very good. All right. So I'm going to end the broad broadcast. So stick around here um, and I'll tell you how to get off of this when we're done. But uh, right. guys, I appreciate everybody who came out tonight. Um, we had about almost 50 people, which is actually pretty good on a Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, but we do appreciate you coming out and joining us and appreciate the questions. So as always, guys, have a great night. Stay safe. And freedom is never free. All right.